Hi, I'm Steve. I'm an addict. I never really know. Uh, when I stand up here, I always, uh, it's always, it's always overwhelming, I think, you know. I think sharing at an NA meeting is, uh, and at a convention is different than sharing anywhere else on the planet. And I never know what I'm going to say because it's not a, uh, it's not a rehearsed speech, you know. I tell a lot of people that um, NA meetings aren't entertainment because a lot of people get frightened of coming here and you've got to sort of say something smart. And sometimes I say things that are funny and sometimes I swear too much, sometimes I break the clarity statement and... and um, and I do like the fact that it's run by addicts for addicts and, um, and you know, it's a simple message that we carry. And uh, I was sitting up the back and I'm, I'm, I look around the room and so what I like about this program is the first convention I went to was at the Masonic Hall. It was the Mason's Lodge. I was six months clean. And um, I'd been through a detox. I'd never heard of 12-step fellowships. I didn't have a fucking clue. And uh, I came from out west. I come from Cabramatta. There's, there was people in the city, like, I remember getting a job once and there was people here from long-term NA as didn't believe had time up, I suppose, cause, because there's a lot of meetings out west that we didn't have to come into the city. We had a Western Area conventions that were crazy. Western Area service was crazy. Western Area ser service meetings went to, like, one in the morning and finished in punch-ups out in the car park at Burwood School. <laughs> it was scary, man, because I'm, I'm sort of... Uh, when you, when you grow up out west and you, you're more of a flighter than a fighter, you've got to learn to look tough and get out quick, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but I remember going to a meeting. I, I, I ended up uh, out west. There were, I didn't, I didn't, no one told me about 12-step fellowships. I loved using drugs. I loved it. I love alcohol. I love the way it made me feel. I remember the first drink I ever had, and I took every drug I swore I wouldn't. And, uh, and I loved it. I loved it till it was killing me and then I still kept doing it because I didn't know how to stop. And then when I found Narcotics Anonymous, it blew my fucking mind. I went to a meeting. Anyone I'd ever been was there. And, uh, you know, because I'd tried everything. I had the Harley shirt without the Harley. I'd, as, as, <laughs> a, fucking, I got clean in 86, so you can just imagine the colours and the hairdos and the meetings and it was, you know... The punk rockers were still hanging on to it and fucking, and the, the inner city mob looked pretty good with their blue black hair and I, I tried the fucking Gucci clan thing with the boat shoes but it never worked, you know. <laughs> I couldn't afford the gold anyway, you know, and I couldn't roll, I couldn't steal it, I couldn't, you know, I wasn't that, so, but I, but I remember everyone there and I felt good that everyone I'd ever been had been there and I was too nervous, I, I relate to the people, I, I was frightened in meetings, if you're new and you're frightened, Everyone fucking feels like that, especially the people that look like they don't. You know, it, it's, it's... I mean, the good thing about coming for a while is you, you get more comfortable here, and I'm grateful for that. And, uh, but on that night, I, I was one of those guys that couldn't go to the dunny, couldn't take his shirt off. I was too... I didn't know that, that, that the spiritual part of this disease was, was that self-centeredness. I didn't know that yet. I just knew that I, I felt awful in the room. But I couldn't stop hearing, you know. And it was funny, I only realised a while back that, that that Monday night meeting at, the, at McKinnon, the Roseville Monday night meeting, was, was, must have been the time I stood up in the countdown and that was my one day clean. But, but I only remember that now because at the time I was just shitting myself. I didn't know you... I didn't know you're the most important person in the room at one day clean. You're just shitting your pants. Fuck, everyone's clapping. Who knows what they're clapping about when you're one day clean? You're <laughs> fucked, you know. <clears throat> it's, that's some scary shit, I reckon, when you're there and you're hanging out. It's fucking... It's like, <laughs> fucking what? The thing that I remembered, I was a bit like that. I saw the people with time up, and thank fuck they're still here. I tell you, I still feel like a newcomer because, in, in the sense that the people that were seven years in front of me then are still seven years in front of me now. That's the fucking miracle of this place, you know. I come here to hear them share. I want to come... I'm still glad I don't qualify. I'm 28 years clean. I don't qualify for the dinosaurs meeting. Still, still I don't qualify because those bastards keep moving it forward, you know. <laughs> And I like that. I like it that you've got to keep coming and going, fuck, I want to get in that dinosaurs meeting, you know? I'm not there yet, you know? Because it used to be 10 years, 20 years, 25, fucking 30 years, you know? But it's good. It's good. I'm glad I don't qualify because I want to come, you know? I want to come and hear those people share. Because this thing, it's, it's a cliche, but it did save my life. I sat in that meeting with my dead candy shirt and I was, I was, I was sitting there and I was, listening, I was listening and thinking, fucking hell, this is, this is, this is out of control. 
and I didn't know how to speak, but two people come up and they said they'd been through, because they make you stand up. Don't be afraid of standing up because it lets us know who you are. And, it, and it, meant, it meant that people come over and they shook my hand and it was the people that had 60 days and 90 days upset I'd just been through where I was and to hang in there and just do what they said. And, and th- there's not a lot of news stories in this place. You know, I was there for five and a half days. Aftercare, like I work in a place now. We, we've got an aftercare program. It's pretty serious. There was no fucking aftercare back then. Just go to meetings, mate. You know, When I left there, I moved to my back into my mum's place. Next to my bedroom was a bar, for fuck's sake. It was like, literally, no one asked me in detox, what's the home look like? My dad's whole bar was literally next to my bedroom door. That's where I I went back. And to this day, I'm amazed I didn't use. And I didn't use because of here, because I'd been to one day, I'd got the message, and I couldn't get it out of my head. The only thing, like people tell you stuff here and you think, ah, I should be right. 90 meetings in 90 days, I seriously thought, how do you fit that in? Until I got home and realised I fucking couldn't work. I couldn't do anything. By the time I had a shower, I was completely stunned. It's like, well, what the fuck do you do now? (laughs) And I was looking through the meetings list to go, I ended up at the lunchtime meeting seriously because I thought, I don't know what to do. Because if you don't use drugs, what the, f- what, what the fuck happens? <laughs> so I ended up there and I'd just do meetings and, and, and on a Sunday you'd do two a day. I remember you'd go to the Burwood, 9 o'clock, Langton, 12, 12, and then I'd spear back to the Wisteria House and they had the, I used to love pyjama meetings. I mean, I don't know what we were thinking, but if you're in detox... If you're in detox at West Area House, you had to wear your pyjamas, and I've never seen pyjamas worn with such panache in my, you know, <laughs> fucking, and no one had their own pyjamas. You were doing good, Henry. I thought that everyone there had the, the, West, the Parramatta Hospital, Westmead Hospital pyjamas. Who can afford fucking pyjamas? You don't walk in with your pyjamas, do you really? Someone else has, someone else has bought your pyjamas. I mean, you can't even afford smokes if you smoke cigarettes, you know? And people that have their collars up and they're fucking rolled up with their smokes underneath. <laughs> I mean, NA was different then. You know, like, when, if you were a smoker, you used to have your packet of Camelus filters and your White Ox because you were serious about smoking, you know? <laughs> it fucking killed a few of us, I tell you. That, you know? I know Mark, Mark, Mark S is there and he used to be a camel man, you know? They all had those perspex cases. They look cool, you know? All I've done is go to meetings, and I think it's hard. I mean, when I went to that first big convention, I'd seen nothing like it. It was a room that was about, I don't know, it felt like a 1,000 people in it, and I heard people share. Back then, it was, it was uh, when people shared about they identified their, their drug of choice, it helped me because I was more of a speed freak and felt like back then I didn't belong, and I liked it when people identified, so I felt like I belonged. But that night, when I left that meeting, we ended up at Max's at Petersham, dancing to the psychotic turnbuckles. I was so fucking wired from a meet, like I didn't, I was that high, we're in there slam dancing at Max's when that was sort of cool, you know, because I had so much energy, I had no idea what to do with it, saying the serenity prayer wasn't cutting it, I had to get it, I was that, I was so fucking pumped and had nowhere to go and we're all there drinking fucking full strength coke, going out, you know, before Red Bull, before Mother, and all, all, all I've done, I went, well, that, that two meetings, when they said 90 meetings and 90, I must have did two a day, three on Sunday. My sponsor ended up telling me to stay home one night and see how I felt. You know, because the idea of being on my own was a fucking serious concern, you know. I don't play well with others and I'm not good in my own company. It was hard, you know. I still remember the first sickness benefits check. I, I, I was amazed that you could live on sickness benefits for two weeks if you didn't use drugs. It was fucking... You couldn't live for one day if you were a drug addict on it, but if you could live two weeks. My nickname was Skateboard Steve because I rode a skateboard at meetings because the buses stopped at Cabramatta and I had to walk home and thought, fuck this. So I, I started riding the skateboard and it was my first experience of just being me. And, and I liked riding it and it felt good. And this was in that period when skateboards weren't cool, you know. And, and I don't know, they're cool now. But, and I remember riding it and thinking it was just felt like I was alive and it actually didn't matter for a while anymore what you thought. Not all the time, but there was moments in it. And since that time, people had just reached out. You know, the, I always usually embarrass Wayne H. He, he, was the, he, was, he was the first guy that answered the phone to me. I got his number because he gave it to me at meetings. And I rang him and he got me through that night. And, and, and I give out my number and people... Like, my phone is still the biggest thing. I just... I'm one of those addicts now, I've got a job, I just buy the biggest plan you can have because I don't want any fucker telling me I can't ring someone, you know, and because I want people to be able to ring me and I want to ring them. And, and I'm just glad that NA, it doesn't matter where you come from, what you used, how much you used, fucking why you used, it's just what you want to do about it. And these meetings are, 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 are still here and I'm just grateful for that. 
And uh, I don't know, like I've got a wife that doesn't know anything about addiction. She's at home with my two boys. I'm, it's a blessing in my life. And she doesn't know what happens here. She just knows that when I get a bit narky, I need to go to one of those meetings. That's all. <laughs> She'll say, Monday night, I'm the member of Brookvale Men's. We go out for the meal after it. She's always thinking, you just, Monday night, you go to your meeting. That's, it just makes, it makes me better for the whole week, you know. So there's too, always too many things, you know, but there's a couple of things I learned here that, that stay with me. If, if you're here for the meeting and you're not working the steps, you're coming to watch other people get well. That's the fucking one thing. You know, that I, you know you may as well, it's like joining a gym and sitting out in the cafeteria eating a scone, fucking going, right. <laughs> and, and that's not a judgment, because when I first come here, I didn't know how to fucking work the steps. I got into a lot of shit and I didn't want to use and then my sponsor steered me to the book. That's how it worked. I'm not a genius. I'm a fucking idiot. That's easily led. Does that make sense? Like, I'll do it my way first every time, and then in desperation I'll ask you what you reckon I should do. It usually means I'll try it one more time my way to make sure, and then I'll do it your way. And, uh, and, and, and the good thing about this place is uh, I always think that... <coughs> the other thing that I think is interesting is you can stand up here, you can say, I fucking hate NA, you guys all suck, I don't believe in God, the steps are fucked, I don't know if I'm going to come back, you know, and I've got a chainsaw in the car and I just might come back in with it in a second with a hockey mask, and when I sit down, most people go, oh, I fucking love that guy, he's funny, hey! keep coming back, mate, I love that Blake's mad as I had to keep coming back. <coughs> because like someone said, the only thing I need to belong here is the, that desire, and I've not lost that desire, and people ask you why you keep coming, I keep coming because... I'm scared. I have, a, I have a healthy respect for the disease of addiction. I've got the second step, sanity. I know it doesn't work for me. That's a gift I was given really early. The obsession was removed. And now I come because I've got a respect. I see people with 20 and 30 years sometimes go back out there. And like, uh, like what Henry said, it, it gets messy and it gets fast. And I, I, don't, I just don't want that. I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I've got this disease of addiction and, and it can be arrested. And it seems to be that it can't be cured. And the scientists can work out and they can have their fucking symposiums. But if I just come here, that message is clear. And if I just keep turning up and doing these steps, I, I don't have to worry about the scientists. I just need to stay clean just for today. Thank you. Yeah.